if the bank asks why you're applying for business credit, please somebody ask answer that. What would we use credit for? Credit to borrow, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have $10,000 on my hand, but I'm gonna go to the bank and say, hey, can I borrow $10,000 to do the thing I was gonna do with my $10,000? Can I use your $10,000? Why, why am I doing that? OPM, other people's money. Thank you. And I would, with a straight face, tell the person at the bank, why should I risk my money when I can risk yours? <laughs> Yes, right. I mean, and I'm going to pay you for it. It's an obvious answer. Of course, I'd rather risk your money. <laughs> the banker would probably the banker would probably sit there with a jaw open, going, "Nobody's ever replied like that." Well, that's exactly what it's for. I mean, yeah. that's you know, what's really funny is you guys have to understand. First of all, banks aren't formed with someone's money that owns the bank. Well, I mean, investors do it, but Banks are businesses that are formed by other people's money. So what would they even ask you that? I mean, the guy at the front end, he's going to ask you that because he doesn't know any better. They said they want to know what they're going to do with the money. Tell them, say, I'm going to spend it. Exactly. I'm going to spend it. I'm going to get rich. I'm going to get rich off of your money. Thank you for taking the risk. Here's your few pennies. Because you guys don't have the idea. I have the idea. But let me just share something with you before I go to Karen. So here's a, write this down. Write it down. Tell your friends at the Christmas party. They're going to think you're a geek and crazy. Banks. Banks are not lenders. So you have to ask the question, if banks are not lenders, if, if John's not crazy, and banks are not lenders, what are they? They're borrowers. That's all they are. So if you think a bank is a lender and you can go to the bank and borrow money, that's what you think you're doing. Well, then you would think, oh, my grandma is sitting on some cash and she, she said I can borrow it if I ever wanted to. Well, grandma is your grandma. And no, she's not a borrower. She's a lender. She really is. Would you do that to your grandmother? She's not suited to be a lender because she's not a borrower. She's your grandma. She can't pick up the phone and call another grandma and say, hey, I just lent my grandson $15,000. Can you lend me $15,000 at a discount rate so I can recover? And then you take it over. Ain't gonna happen, right? So don't think because you have cash, you can own your own asset, buy your own asset and just sit on it like that. You should get lenders because lenders are suited to be lenders. Real estate investors are not. Business owners are not. Even though you could, it's not the best use of capital. Always use other people's money. When the bank asks why I'm applying for business, yeah, that's what you tell them. Why should I risk my money? When I can pay you a few pennies and you'll risk yours. That's what I'll tell them. To build cash flow, buy an asset, expanding operations. Okay, they want to know stuff like that, but I like the, I like the smart ass answer. They want to know what I'm doing with my money, of course. Hey, if you want to know what I'm doing with my money, why do you want to know? Because what I'm going to do with my money is a trade secret. If I tell you, then you might compete with me. So I could tell you, but you'd have to sign an agreement with liquidated damages. Are you willing to do that? Oh, hold on a second. I'll be right back. I have to talk to my manager. <laughs> no, we just want to prevent money laundering. Oh, really? And who authorized you or delegated you the authority to do that? I thought I was just here for banking services. Yeah, that won't give me the loan. I know. Well, okay, but you want to, guys, you'll figure out how to get the loan, okay? You're. I want you to be educated. <laughs> They're just originators, right? They say, say originator, okay? Originator means if the bank is a loan originator, that means it's a borrower of your money. That's why I said banks are borrowers. The term originator means you're the chump that just lent the bank money and you think the bank lent you the money. And then once the bank borrowed the money from you, it got another bank to borrow it from itself. <laughs> why do you think the bank holds your money transactions, right? If you wire money somewhere, why do you think it 
sits on your money and says it has to hold it to make the funds clear when the funds are already cleared. Sometimes an LLC needs a business license. Um, very seldom do I see that as a necessity. I'd have to look at each uh, you know situation. Very seldom though. My manager said our underwriting terms are not negotiable. Good luck. Oh yeah, underwriting cannot be negotiable. Underwriting is insurance. Insurance is banking. It's all the same. So that's not, that's not, uh, okay. So you're not trying to negotiate, okay? So ask for the disclosure of underwriting terms. You're not going to get it. And it's a trade secret. So how can you be compelled to negotiate with some person who's not in the room? Is that a matter of underwriting? All right. So yeah, I understand. But you guys will figure it out how to get your loan. Look, I, I get through life and do things by being a smart ass and giving these answers. But I still, you know, I don't give up my privacy. I still retain my rights. I still get what I need to get done. Okay. Just don't give it up. Just, just don't think you need them for everything. Don't just give up and just say, well, well, please have mercy on me here. I'll give you everything. You don't need them that badly. Yeah. Just realize this whole system is, we're kind of in a financial war. This whole system is a war on you. You're producing, you're going out in the world and doing things, right? You're serving people, you're making stuff, you're making things work. And so there's a war on that. And there you'll see pretty soon, you're going to start seeing expert systems and hardware replacing human labor. Okay, so banks will open bank accounts for foreign corporations but you're gonna to have to domesticate the corporation. Why? Because the bank wants you, because the government wants the bank to want you to be a resident. Residency creates liability. The bank wants you to be liable under that local jurisdiction's statutes. Even the bank itself has to have residency. Okay, residency is established. So yeah, you can have a foreign company, but when you, do business with a bank in one of the states, the bank will expect you to be resident. Now, I'm sure there's some exceptions like big institutions, but there's other types of mechanisms by which that institution is liable. There has to be some sort of jurisdictional liability, right? So yeah, um, they want to sedate and restrain us. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I see it, you guys see it. You guys see people operating cars. It's the most obvious thing or walking around in public I think they're functionally insane or they're drugged out, but they're able to still function somewhat, but they're on too many drugs. I see that. I think one of the biggest drugs, the most effective, the most pervasive is going to be dopamine. Dopamine is produced in your body. Okay, the stimuli for that is gonna be blue light from your technology. Think about that. Imagine being addicted to a drug that your body produces. So you're really addicted to the blue light. Huh. Yeah, I never thought about that. I mean, that, that's reverse because normally dopamine, you get addicted to skydive or you get addicted to. Well, yeah, your it? body produces that. Serotonin also. Right. So, well, the serotonin and uh, is it serotonin? The blue light off the computer. Well, there's the dopamine, the ser what is it? The endorphins. Endorphins. endorphins that's what I'm talking I'm talking about endorphins yeah yeah so endorphins I was I was addicted I was literally addicted to that I was in, in high school I was overtraining in long distance running and I, I I only felt good when I was running and I would run like 12 15 miles a day at like two o'clock in Florida in the summertime when it was 98 degrees out I just loved it and it killed me it, I almost died of a heat stroke one day and I had to change all that <laughs> but I ran my body into nothing I just ran it into the into like you know mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a skeleton and uh I was addicted to the endorphins. And when I was forced to not run for like a week, then I, my body recovered. And then I realized that was actually, I was addicted. So that's why I, when I look around, I see people on their phones all day long and they're like this, you know, it's a drug addiction. Yeah. Hey, you mentioned a video when we first started the call, uh, I, uh, LLC, Ireland LLC video. Where I don't. It's on YouTube right now. Oh, it's on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, I just put it up there. I just published it. It's public. Uh, Ireland LLC Crypto Tax Strategies. I try to put okay. all the keywords in there. Yeah.
So that that is the core stuff. I mean, so when people call me from like Scotland and, and New Zealand and whatever, or whatever, Latvia, that's the conversation we have. And so I figured this person did such a great job of asking me questions. I would just go through and answer his questions and make a video out of it. And, and that really is going to give you a, a good understanding. And this is dealing with the money aspect of it. There are some things like, for example, if someone has a, a liability or a chance of his business being sued, you got two risks there. One is cost of litigation and, other, and the other is brand name recognition. Whoever talks about that stuff. Because <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're right. If your company is sued, then it looks bad, right? So what you can do is, like I like to call it, export the risk of being sued. If I export the risk of being sued, I accomplish two things. I avoid the cost of litigation because I don't need to defend myself because my good name and reputation is not in jeopardy. Because what happened? I exported the risk of being sued to another company. The person still has a remedy, but he doesn't get to attack my company and, and damage his good name and reputation by a pending lawsuit, even if I win, right? Because if I win, it's going to cost money. Did I really win? So I avoid both by writing my contract in a way that provides a remedy to the customer that might sue me or the vendor that might sue me or the supplier that might sue me. I limit his remedy to a company that's not in my brand name. It's a separate company. I have every right to do that, right? Imagine if I ran a, um, I, I had a client that ran a, a, a vacuum cleaner, a carpet cleaning business, and uh, he was doing really well. And he had like a dozen trucks with all these, all this equipment and stuff. And it was good cash flow. And uh, the big problem was he had one company. All the cash flow was in the same company as all the trucks. And you, as you can imagine, vehicles are a huge, immense liability. You have no, it's uncontrollable. You don't know what's going to happen there. They're out driving all over. You got all these different drivers. You don't know what's going on there. I mean, you could do your best to screen them out, but still. So I said, why don't you tra transfer the ownership of the vehicles to a separate company? So at least do that much, right? That way, if something wacky happens with the vehicles, the vehicles are all in there, but it's not going to mess with your cash flow. You need that cash flow. So that would be one example. So there's all kinds of different, you know, risks like that. Well, products. Okay, so the LLC selling products or is Amazon selling products in this case? I'm not applying for a license since I figured Amazon is selling. I don't know what case you're talking about, but if you have an Amazon store, I suppose Amazon is drop shipping. I don't know how that works. I think Amazon drop ships. You can look at your contract. It'll tell you right in there. And it'll establish the rights and liabilities, rights and rights and obligations of the parties. Well, all right. I don't want to go too far. I, I'm tempted to go off into other subjects, but I don't want to. The name of this company. What company? Oh, okay. All right. Name of this company. I don't know. Oh, okay. I never saw that one. All right. All right. Anyone? Anyone? Want to bring up anything else? Because um, it's been it's been an hour. It's been a delight. I've enjoyed hearing myself talk. <laughs> I hope that what I explain, you know, gives you a bit more clarity and hopefully you can apply it to different aspects of what you're doing and just know that you have something really important and that's a private property, right? It's the thing that allowed us to create a government in the first place. It's the thing that allows us to manage our lives and the things that are important to us, like property and treasure and family heirlooms. Okay. Private property rights. Let's throw in there, shall we? Parental custody. These are property rights. They're also fundamental rights. Let's not forget that. Oh, is Memorial Day coming up? All right. Well, let's do what we do. You know what that is on Memorial Day. Remember, people, and also have a good time. So that so the thing at nine o'clock, the, the blossom. Um... Yeah, at nine o'clock. I'm going to talk with um, uh, Michelle Melendez over at Blossom Inner Wellness. You can search on YouTube. I don't know if she's going to do a live feed, but it's Blossom Inner Wellness. Uh, okay. What I could do is if there's a way to invite you, I'll put up my Ace of Grant, uh, Ace of Coins Telegram post, okay? okay? So you can join if you want. Uh, so I'll ask her. She's going to send me the link shortly. And what we're going to talk about, she wanted to talk about property taxes and permitting. So we're going to talk about the claims on the title of real estate. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll look for it. Excellent. All right. Thanks for reminding me.
All right, All right again, great. Thanks, a lot. thanks to everyone for joining and enjoy your uh, weekend. Enjoy your long weekend.